What is good this fine evening, people? How you doing? It's your man Donald King. I'm uh, I'm shooting remote tonight. I'm gonna be with my boy this week here in Indiana. Get a chance to spend some time with my little guy. I love him. I'm playing with the lighting a little bit today. I wanted to go with something that kind of resembled sunlight. Um, hopefully it works. I don't know. I don't know. Anywho, uh, hopefully you all are doing well out there tonight. I don't know how the um, I don't know how the frame rates are going to come through on this one. I'm hooked to a different um, uh, IP address, so sometimes when I hook up to new addresses, there's a bit of fragmenting issues. But um, you know, hey man, we're just going to shoot from the hip. This is going to be interesting for me because it's like I, I've not I've never tried dialing in from this location. Every time I'm around my little boy, it's like I always uh, I always get a little bit sort of soft and removed from uh, removed from my my, my uh, how would I say that? My intensity is dialed down a bit. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like when I dial in, I'm a bit softer. You know what I'm saying? But uh, tonight's tonight's podcast should be pretty interesting. So I don't know how this is going to go. We'll see. Hopefully, I hopefully it's like I, I perform the task. But you know, you know, the subject of tonight's podcast is the elephant in the room. Elephant in the room. That is a that's sort of a a phrase given to. You know what happens when people try to look past and avoid very very obvious things you know what I'm saying um, a lot of times you know we, we encounter things in life that are scary to us we encounter things that make us feel insecure and uncertain and more often than not the way that we choose to deal with those things is by um, well basically sort of burying our head in the sand, pretending like they're not there until we can't ignore them anymore. And that's basically what the elephant in the room, um, what is that, is it euphemism? Is that what it is? It basically circles to, you know, or, or, or alludes to. It's trying to avoid and or pretend like very obvious things are not happening. You know, uh, I'm a weird one. I'm a weird one. And I'm not, I'm not saying that like in terms of, you know, how I project to people in a social sense. I mean, I'm sure that there are quite a few people who think that I'm kind of an oddball. But, um, you know, and at least in terms of my way of interacting with people in social settings. However, something that cannot be ignored is the fact that I'm an anomaly. I'm an anomaly. I don't fit into any of the boxes. I say things that seem outlandish in many ways, shapes, in many ways. I wanted to say shapes and forms, but I don't know if it applies there. I say things that sound a little outlandish, but I make sense. I make sense in everything that I say. Even when I'm distracted, I'm still sort of dialed in my brain seems to process information and reality exceptionally well, yet I say these things that go so far outside the parameters of convention that the only way to describe them in many senses is to, is to, to, to call them insane. How is something crazy but sensible at the exact same time? How can someone demonstrate an awareness of everything that's sort of happening around them? Demonstrate, you know, a healthy mental state and condition, but still say things that are so far removed from everyone's experience that to even consider them seems crazy. How? It creates a paradox, doesn't it? 
How can someone be crazy and insanely sane at the exact same time? How? What do you do with something like that? You know, I've been trying to explain what I am and or the thing that I host for some time now. I'm trying to help you get a grasp of this because, well, see, the thing is, it's, it's, it's not a figment of my imagination. I can explain all of these things exceptionally well and then link what I'm saying to things that can be measured mutually independent of what I'm talking about and of my experience. You know the point of universal math? Again, it's not to flex on this species, it's to basically show you that there are structures that exist mutually independent of what I'm saying that existed long before I was a thing. If I can point to salient patterns that can be sort of charted and tracked mutually independent of me as in, in, in my lifetime in me as an individual then it's like the patterns they exist mutually independent of me I'm not creating these things I'm pointing to something that was already there I'm pointing to something that was already there in all the principles that I speak to I'm pointing to something that was already there. A lot of times I'll use this analogy of having perfect pitch with respect to reality, right? It's like having the avatar perspective, it's like having pitch to having perfect pitch with respect to reality. Why do I mention this? Because it's like a person who has perfect pitch, they're not creating the tones that they're able to pick out. They're not creating the tones they're able to pick out. If I go to a G, the vibration, the frequency, it exists mutually independent of me. I'm not creating it. I'm not creating the G. I'm just able to identify it. I recognize its signature. How many times do you have to see someone be on before you can accept the fact that maybe, just maybe, they're, they're dialed into a space of awareness or a state of understanding that you maybe don't have access to? How long can you dance around the elephant in the room? I make too much sense to be crazy, but I'm so far outside of the throes of convention that, well, you can't really liken me to anyone. Nothing I'm saying is derivative not from convention. The things I'm saying aren't achieved through systems of idealism. So where does my understanding come from? How long can you dance around the elephant in the room? Oh man, it's looking like I'm getting some fragmenting issues going on down here. Uh, yeah, I figured it might happen with this being linked to this IP address, but hopefully they're not too much. Hopefully they're not too much. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to get any comments this time around, either due to the subject matter or due to um, just apparently Facebook and things of that nature. So sometimes it's just... It's a shit show going on behind the scenes. So I don't know if you see or will hear this, but we're gonna keep it going anyway. But how long can we dance around the elephant in the room? 
You see, one of the main things that it's like I hope that you all are paying attention to is that I'm not attributing any of the things that I'm able to do or the things that I'm saying to my own view and perspective. Granted, I do take personal responsibility for the things that I say in that I qualify my speech so as not to elevate my experience to the level of truth and reality for all things. However, however, I attribute everything that I see to a thing that's performing through me that allows me to see reality in the way that I do. This isn't Donald King's thoughts and views versus the world. This isn't Donald King's personal feelings and beliefs versus everyone else's. This is Donald King describing what he sees through a type of perspective that's been afforded to him through no achievement of his own. With respect to this entire experience, the majority of the work that I've put into the, I would say my tenure as avatar for this cycle has to do with learning how to refine language models and learning how to use the avatar perspective better, learning how to dial in with it and learning how to explain what I see through it. So the majority of the revision that I've done through the years, it really has to do with, um, or the majority of the growth that I've, I've gone through through the years, if you would say that I've taken any sort of steps towards enlightenment, has to do with me learning how to express and articulate what I see better. Learning how to see through this perspective that's been afforded to me better and learning how to not jump to um, conclusions without, uh, without giving myself a proper amount of time to, 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 to sort of um, observe things properly through the perspective. But I can't take any credit for anything else, which is why I never refer to myself as a genius. Even though this perspective, even though it allows me to keep pace with convention and outperform science and academia pretty easily, I can't take any credit for being a genius because it's borrowed talent, it's not mine. It's not mine. Brother Absurd comes in. What's up, Donald? Personally, it's hard to know which questions to ask when I don't even know where to start when understanding things such as universal math and how things are constructed with and through numbers, right? Well, Brother Absurd, you just started. You just started. Yeah, it's like, you know what? First of all, uh, just to clear up that one point, what we refer to as numbers, they're, they're, um, they're basically sort of principles that, that follow in sequence. So numbers are what we use for, uh, to, to, as, as sort of like conceptual building blocks, but in nature, it's just sequences of principles. So, um, yeah, it's you know, how we how we perceive numbers and how we use numbers is is weird compared to nature. But the point that I'm making in saying that is in order for us to 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 have these conversations, they have to start somewhere. They have to start somewhere. Somebody's got to be brave enough to step up and say, hey, you know what? I don't understand. What, what do you see? How does that pertain to me? This, these, these are like conversations that people need to be brave enough to have. Which comes to the point of what we're talking about tonight. It's about bravery. Acknowledging the elephant in the room is about bravery. We got to get our testicular and our ovarian fortitude up, people. You can't pretend to be like, you know, lost in your, you can't stay in your inner story forever. You can't stay in your bubble forever. You have to step into it and be like, hey, I'm insecure and uncertain. I'm unsure what's out there, what's happening. 
what's actually happening. You have to step into it. Guys, I feel insecure and uncertain about things a lot of times. There are things even now that it's like, you know, I still have to set myself up to sort of investigate and see what's going on. Balancing it out with, you know, me trying to stay in this space of, of, of being receptive to this thing that's sort of performing through me and knowing the difference between what, what, what sort of direction it's steering me in and then what direction my own ego and society is trying to steer me in, sometimes that's difficult. Even in admitting that, that's difficult. It's difficult to discern. But you, you still gotta step into it and face it. You can't avoid the elephant in the room forever. A lot of times when we come across things that are uh, beyond our scope of influence, our respective scopes of influence, what we try to do is we try to deal with them from afar. We create meanings and symbols and beliefs about what's happening and we try and give labels to things and try to make everything convenient to the boxes we know when we already try to make sense of the world with. We try to remote control, problem solve, and well shit simply doesn't work that way, does it? You can't guess about something on the other side of the room and then hope that what you're guessing at is accurate and then get some balls up and, well, you're going to have to go investigate. See what the fuck is up. People give me labels all the time. They give me labels all the time. They think that they can solve the problem of Donald King by simply coming up with agreements they make with themselves and agreements they make with others about me and who, how, what, and why I am, and they're always off topic, they're always off base, instead of stepping into it and seeing what's up, they think that they can point their fingers at me and solve the problem from afar. It doesn't work that way though, does it? You gotta step into it, guys. I promise I'm gonna do I promise I'm gonna do everything in my power to be as honest and forthright with you as I can. I'm still trying to figure a lot of this shit out myself. I'm not operating from a space of knowledge. I actually have to use this perspective to see how things are and how principles align in real time. Now there's going to be a lot of shit that we're figuring out together. My whole life path was sort of chosen. It's like there are a lot of meta decisions that weigh on my circumstance that, well, I have to hear and I have to see that don't have anything to do with what I want. They don't have anything to do with my own desires or my own will and sense of direction. And, I'm here figuring it out with you. But you got to be brave enough to see what's up. You got to be brave enough to see what's up. Can't dance around the elephant in the room forever, guys. He's crazy. No, I'm not. He's evil. <laughs> Absolutely not. He's a narcissist. Eh, I used to be back in the day, but you can't perform at this level of proficiency and be lost in the idea of you at the exact same time. You can't be so given to protecting and preserving your identity that 
you can't go places you know will get you in trouble with people. That's something you guys need to understand, especially when it comes to any thoughts you might have about me being a narcissist. A narcissist is a person who is addicted to their identity and who will go to any length, any length to protect, preserve, and enhance their identity and or their status and reputation within a given social sphere or realm. All right? Doing what I do is by default humiliating. I have to be humbled. I'm keenly aware of the fact that the type of impact that I make on people is not going to win me a lot of fans. And yet, you, you, you have to be brave enough to do it anyway. You have to know that this work is going to make you unpopular, and you have to be brave enough to do it anyway. That in itself it negates the, the whole theory of me being narcissistic. I'm not winning fans with this, but I do it anyway. I do it because it's essential. Not because there's any sort of social reward linked to this uh, to this endeavor. Tons of women aren't throwing their panties at me like, mm, Don, come get this box. <laughs> I mean, there are a few who think that I'm alright, but you, you you take more hits to your identity doing this work than you receive in the way of social rewards and acknowledgement. Yet I persist. What I'm saying remains consistent. It consistently performs above, beyond the limits and scope of convention. I'm not good enough to make this stuff up. You can literally pour through everything that I've done for the last decade and the only thing, the last 13 years, and the only thing that's really changed is my ability for articulation and the level of detail I've used towards explaining a lot of the principles that I speak to, but I'm consistent. The reason why I'm so consistent in explaining sort of, you know, social phenomena and effects and frames to you all, the reason why I go out of my way to explain these things to you and to show you how consistent I am in understanding how things function on this side is to give you some indication regarding how accurate I am in terms of describing what I see happening on the other side. If I can describe it this clean in the material realm, chances are I can describe it just as clean pertaining to the principal realm. My point is simply this. By now, you have enough information available to you to know that I'm not making any of this stuff up. If you've been paying attention, if you've been dialing in, if you've actually been sort of charting my progress through the years, then you should know that I'm not making any of this stuff up. It'd be very convenient for us if it were. And I say us because if I was making this stuff up, it means I could quit at any time. If I could quit at any time, why? I would probably get me a big booty Latina and move to an island and crank out babies. <laughs> I like saying that, that's very funny. That's very funny. But um, yeah, nah. 
I'm not making any of this stuff up, guys. I'm not making any of this stuff up. So how long are you going to dance around it? How long do you think you can actually pretend like I'm not here? How long do you think you can sort of lay up in this uh, little nest you've created wherein I'm some easy, evil, crazy conspiracy theorist How long can you dance around the elephant in the room? You see, what it boils down to is we, um, well, we're here now. Regardless of whether or not you like where we're at, here we are. It's only so much dancing you can do. And you have to forgive me. It's like I was, I was distracted there for a moment. But Like it, don't like it. Reality simply is what it is. You have the option of either facing reality, adapting to it, adjusting to what's happening in real time, or sort of retreating into your inner story and trying to live out reality from within a fiction, but the thing is, reality doesn't recognize that fiction. The more you retreat from it, why? The worse things tend to get. You have to be brave enough to see what's what. Bravery is tough, man. Oftentimes you have a lot to lose. Oftentimes you'll see me talk about, um, you'll see me liking, you'll see me liking, um, you know, the living within the inner story, living within the identity to being addicted to a hard substance like crack or, or meth or whatever. And the reason for this is because, well, they all basically boil down to escapism. We, we want things that, that, that make us feel good, that make us feel, um, you know, that, 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 that sort of take the rough edges off of reality and give us a place where we can, we can sort of breathe and relax. And that, that good feeling we get from escapism it's 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 highly addictive being addicted to the inner story is no different from being addicted to crack you know it makes you feel good and when problems in your life start piling up as a result of you retreating to this escape one of the easiest things to do is to sort of circle back to the escape and delay facing reality because, well, you get it in your mind. I'm going to get enough strength to face all of this once I get just a little bit more of this escape. It's not the way that it works though, is it? Addiction is addiction. The more you retreat from it, the more you retreat from reality is the, the, the harder it is to face reality when all is said and done. The more you get high on your own supply is the harder it is to dial into what's actually happening in the world around you and adapt to what's happening around you in real time. 
the more you delay syncing up with reality, the worse shit gets. Which brings us back to the point of this video. How long can you dance around the elephant in the room? I'm not doing this for fun, you know. I have better things to do with my time, or <laughs> in most circumstances, I would say that I have better things to do with my time. When I understand the gravity of the situation, I, I'm not sure that I, I could think of anything better to do with my time, but again, if I wanted attention, I have the means to get that in ways unrelated to this. You can gather around as many people as you like. You guys can create and circulate stories among yourselves that Basically some to, oh, he's bad, and he's crazy, he's evil. Your authentic self knows that's a lie, though. How long can you block out that voice that's telling you maybe you need to pay attention? How long can you ignore your intuition? How long can you avoid the elephant in the room? Yeah, man. It's been a lot of scary shit that I've faced in my day. It's been a lot of scary shit I've faced in my day. I don't know if I can take any sort of credit for it, though. I think that... Um, <laughs> I found myself in situations where um, I was just there and had to step into it. <laughs> and I might even be able to say that uh, I was too lazy to try and find a way out. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. Maybe I was brave enough to power through. I don't know. But um, when all is said and done, man, when all is said and done, you can only avoid reality and the reality of situations for so long. At a certain point, you got to step into it and see what's what. At a certain point, you got to step into it and see what's what. I know Brother Absurd is tuned in. We got anybody else out there in the audience tonight? We got any uh, interlocutors? They're like, Don, we don't like that, that look on your face. It's too... It looks too... Uh, looks too yellow. I don't know. Uh, uh, mm, I'm tired. Man, what a day. What a day. I have so many things that I have to deal with in my private life, it's weird. You would think that everything would be set up in such a way that I would be able to focus exclusively on Avatar work. Um, and for the record, I, that's all I'm supposed to be, so far as I'm aware. That's the only thing I'm supposed to be focused on during this lifetime, and the fact that you have all of these cowardly ideologues in positions of authority, these aggressive betas doing everything they can, trying to win a game that's unwinnable. It's insane to me. Like, this is something I can't seem to understand. How are you part of agencies and, and, and groups that have been monitoring me this entire time, getting, like, someone talking behind the fourth wall the entire time, Watching them sort of fumble their way through this process so that you can see that there's authenticity in what they're doing and that it's not rehearsed 
and still have it in your mind, oh, we're going to compete to the very end. That's just the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. It doesn't make any sense. But, I mean, it's pr pride, pride, human pride is just weird, man. Pride is a weird thing. It makes it so that you think that you can do the impossible based on based on things that you haven't even taken time to properly assess and wait in, in, in reality in real time. Pride is weird. And pride being the basis of narcissism. You sit here and it's like you uh, like imagine imagine like looking at and again you could look at somebody like John Jones or Israel Adesanya or any any of these like elite level fighters. Imagine a person who's never thrown a punch in their entire life, a person who's not even really that gifted when it comes to athleticism, thinking they can take on and defeat people who train to be like elite level fighters. That's what pride will do to you. Pride will make you think that you can take on things you haven't even begun to prepare for. It's just weird. Pride makes you think that luck is a skill. And that you... <laughs> Pride makes you think luck is a skill. <laughs> I think I might have to quote that. That's, that's wild. Pride makes you think luck is a skill. And the worst part about it is... <laughs> It'll be some. It'll be like you haven't even done anything to increase your luck in any way, shape, or form. It's insane. A lot of you have it in your mind that hope is a skill, and that blind allegiance. It's both a skill and a virtue. And that blocking out things that are unpleasant or difficult to come to terms with is a skill. I assure you, these are not skills. At best, they're deflective. The best they only serve to delay the inevitable. It's wild, man. Again, I'm wondering how dialed in I am right now. Um, it's really funny because it's like... <laughs> And you have to forgive me. It's like I, I thought that uh, I was I was being listened to, and that distracted me. Whenever I uh, feel an audience that I'm uh, or the presence of an audience that I was not planning on, it makes me feel self conscious. And all of a sudden, it's like I become keenly aware of myself. And when I become keenly aware of myself, I stop being dialed into reality and I start getting dialed into performance and that in itself is problematic, which is why I had to redirect and hopefully it's like I've tuned back into this point. But um, yeah, man, it's just wild. How long can you avoid the elephant in the room? Why don't you ask yourself an honest question? Ask yourself this question. You watch me do these podcasts. For those of you who are paying attention right now, you watch me do these podcasts. Does anything about me even come across as remotely insane? Take into account how I speak to you. I know that I'm speaking to a camera, but because it's like I have interlocutors coming in, I know that I'm speaking to an audience out there. There are people who are watching me. Is, does anything that I do strike you as even remotely insane? Like a person whose mind is sort of divorced from reality. And I'm not talking about you know, like whether or not the things you think I say and or the subjects I speak, I speak to 
could make me come across as insane. I'm talking about just in terms of my ability to process information and reality. Do I demonstrate an awareness of and for self with respect to the contexts I speak to and perform within? Do I demonstrate an awareness for what's happening in the social sphere? To a degree that you could say, oh, this, this person, they, they have they have an awareness for the world outside of them. I, I guarantee you, you could get the best cognitive scientist on the planet to analyze every single thing that I'm talking about and do, and I guarantee you they would say, no, no, he demonstrates an awareness for himself in relation to and with respect to the world around him or with the world around him. And if I'm not crazy, which obviously I'm not, then if we go to, you know, is he narcissistic? Mm, no. No, narcissists, it, it goes back to psychosis. A narcissist sees themselves as being at the center of everything and they have to they have to justify everything by and according to their own experience and how they're affected and impacted by the world around them. For a narcissist, they are at the center of everything, which again would necessarily preclude me attributing any gift that I may or may not have to the avatar perspective and or to an entity performing through me. So because I don't make myself at the center of everything, it, 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 it sort of discounts any thought anyone might could or anyone might 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 um, form pertaining to me being narcissistic am I evil oh my god no I <laughs> tell everybody to be honest and the reason and not believe me and I attribute all things to God I recognize God I recognize the goodness in every faith system, only the goodness, and we toss away all the exploitation. There is no, there is no logical foundation any person can come up with to, to, to sort of fit me into a box that's convenient to their, to whatever label they would try and project onto me. So if this person is saying all of these things that match with what can be verified on this side of existence and that fit with frames that have already been sort of measured and, 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 and um, sort of theorized from within the, the, the realms of academia and philosophy and whatnot, if, I, if all this shit fits and flows together, what are the odds of me being anything less than what I claim to be? They're insanely low. They're insanely low. The odds of me being something less than what I claim to be are so unfathomably low. I mean, if you're applying statistics to it, you're talking about 0. 0.000, and then you start adding other digits. But there is a less than 1% margin of error. Can you cling to that margin of error? Be like, yo, well, there's, there's still a chance he's crazy. There's still a chance he's evil. There's still the chance he's delusional. How long can you dance around the elephant in the room? Hmm, this is an interesting light. <laughs> uh, uh, 
how's this gonna go, man? I don't know. I'm not psychic. That's the dumbest thing. That's the dumbest. I, I mean, I, I don't think it's the dumbest thing. Let me let me change my word, my verbiage on that. But it's like of all the things that you can see, you can't see the future. So, if you can see reality in the present, you can see everything. And it's sort of perfect pitch in the way that I describe it, but the thing that you can't see is the future. So I understand how bodies of principles play out. So like I understand, like if I'm just describing what I see, you can see how a conjoined twin situation plays out in principles, right? But where humanity falls on that spectrum is anybody's guess will the species get you know turn toward a neutral state and sort of get absorbed into the body of the now conjoined twin universe or will they continue to fight stay in a state of corruption and ultimately get cast into the distortion what percentage of the population will that happen to? Who knows? I don't know. Will it happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. This this whole thing with parasitism and a parasitic twin universe and getting conjoined, that's happening. Because it's part of a process. The reality is called to cease and desist. Figure out how to get out of an aggressor state. Figure out how to get out of that corrupt state. Or else. Who's going to figure out how to get out of the corrupt state? Your guess is as good as mine. My job in the, to know these things is to simply show up and explain what I see without adding anything to it or withholding anything. Tell the truth without embellishing, without holding back. But yeah, it's wild. I'm really questioning how bad I messed up through the center of that Wondering if I was being listened to. That's wild, man. That's wild. But, um, yeah, it's like I, I, I got to get used to shooting in this space as well. Um, I really wish I had more interaction to go on tonight because, well, talking to you guys and explaining principles to you all helps me dial in a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, man, this is... This is weird. This is a weird situation. I tell you this, man. I had no idea that this was going to be my life. I had no idea this was going to be my life. It's not something you can prepare for. It's not something that you can... There's nothing you can prepare for. It's wild. Wow. You gotta push through anyway, right? Mm. Yeah, man. Wow. I only have one comment. Wow, that's insane. Ugh. I'm hook. I'm old. <laughs> Oh, Brother Absurd comes back in. How are there intuitive responses that give forewarning? Um, you always ask great questions. Brother Absurd, the word! You always ask great questions, man. It's an honor to know you. I think that you're a dope dude, man. I genuinely do. Um, to answer your question, um, how are there intuitive responses that give forewarning? Uh... 
Huh. Okay, so let's put a frame like this. So I'm gonna have to go down something that you're well familiar with, but it's like this is just for the other, this is just for the other interlocutors who may or may not be watching. Again, reality is the phenomenon humans refer to as God. Reality is a living, sentient, self-aware system. It is, uh, for all intents and purposes, sort of like an accountant. It manages balance between systems. Notably, the meta systems we refer to as existence and non existence. And yes, non existence is a system. Lots of S's in there. All right. So, the reason why it's important to understand that is because if reality is a living, sentient, and self aware system akin to like a body, then it's like, um, think about it like this. In the same way that you would sort of uh, contract and retract or protract or whatever you call it, your hand, your central consciousness is passing information down to and throughout the collective of building blocks your hand is comprised of and it's telling these organisms to either bond together or separate. So over the course of several generations and lifetimes of cellular building blocks right here, they, some of the planets that are in your universe, while well, they move a little bit closer together, some of the galaxies do, some move further apart. And this happens with even down to the, 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 very, the various planets that these building blocks are comprised of, the, the, uh, 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 antelope running from a lion and the lion capturing the antelope and uh, 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 like, you know, deciding to let it go instead of eat it. It's receiving an intuitive connection, uh, an intuitive, uh, an intuitive instruction from the greater consciousness that is your mind which ultimately results this cellular building block re receiving this intuitive instruction from your mind it ultimately has this sort of reverberative effect that collectivize that causes all of these different life forms through collective efforts to cause tiny shifts that ultimately result in the automation of your hand. Okay? So the reason why, again, I mentioned this is because if reality is like a body, then you receiving intuitive connection, intuitive instructions from this higher life form, it causes you to step left or step right. It causes you to lunge forward or fall back. It will cause you to see the most beautiful woman you've ever seen and be like, nah, that's not for me. But then see somebody who's maybe not your taste and be like, I can't get enough of her. Oh my God, she's delicious. These intuitive instructions you receive, they give you forewarning. And the more dialed into reality you are, the more conscientious you are, the more honest you are and connected you are to the higher source, to the higher life form, is the more you can be guided by that meta system to do things that are in theme with what you're supposed to be doing in life. You see, when you're dialed into this system, bro, when you're dialed into the system of the higher life form, you're going to move different than people who are dialed into the disease. You're going to move different than people who are dialed into corruption. And um, th those intuitive responses, they're going to give you forewarning. Like right now, even with everything that I'm doing in terms of what I'm describing, I am giving intuitive forewarning to people. The intuition, the higher life form, the higher system, it is, it is communicating through me, and I'm I am basically giving forewarning. Hey guys, get out of a state of corruption because chops are about to be made. Now, your intuition, your own sense of intuition, it 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 it, it sort of guides you to listen. Hey, there's something different about this dude talking. There's something different about what he's saying. He doesn't sound like every other doomsday person. 
He doesn't sound like, you know, people who are trying to build social reputation or things of this nature. Something about him is worthy of my 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 my, my attention. And what the question that you have is what is the voice inside of you that's saying maybe I shouldn't look away? That's your intuitive connection. That's your intuitive forewarning. Hey, this is important. Maybe I, maybe I need to see what's going on here. Hopefully I answered that well enough. But this is the way that it works, people. It's the way it works. Dancing around the elephant in the room. How long can you dance around reality? How long can you dance around reality? Yeah. That's what it is. Uh. That is a reality that I cannot, that's a, that's a fact of reality. I can't dance around. <sighs> no, I don't feel too old. If I'm being dead honest, I feel pretty good most days. There isn't much to complain about. I don't feel the same way that I did when I was 20. It's like, you know, especially uh, as my body continues to age, my Things don't work the way that they used to. Get new, get new uh, cricks and creeks to <laughs> sort of deal with and make peace with as as you continue to mature. But all in all, there there isn't much to complain about. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. So hopefully I didn't fudge this up, guys. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We are where we are. We all have to be brave, man. We all have to be brave. Figure out what's what, you know. Man, earlier today I, I made some juice. Oh my God. I drank it and it just, my whole body, it lit on fire. Like my juice, it's like whenever I have like fresh living juice, like good living juice, dude, my whole, it was like flame on. And I've been feeling pretty good ever since, you know. Granted, though, sometimes it gives my uh, it gives my stomach a little, a little bit of stuff to sort of contend with. Anywho, I'm going to get ahead and get off here because I'm just talking at this point. Guys, y'all know what it is. Uh, it's your man Donald King. I am on Facebook Live. Obviously, that's where I'm shooting this from. Uh, you can also catch me on Instagram. And um, I fly all of these videos over to YouTube. Uh, when I'm done, you know, uh, you can check me out on all these channels. Also, um, I post Medium. I post content to Medium, and um, you know, uh, you guys can check out some of the pieces that I've written there. Uh, I really have to get more on uh, Medium. I've been so busy lately that I haven't had a chance to be as active on social media as I, I, I normally am. But uh, hopefully, as I continue to get things more organized, that will change. I really want to give you guys a fair chance to know everything that I see through this perspective. I, I really want to I want to make this as fair as possible. Again, this we were all born into this situation. It's really easy to sort of wag fingers and be like, you're the bad guy, you're the bad guy, you're the bad guy. But when you understand that 
people were born into this shit, regardless of 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 how high they are on the um, how high they are on the 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 the, the social uh, stratification on uh, how high they sit on the social stratification system and forgive me I know I could have said a lot of things better than I did tonight but every single person was born into this circumstance it's unfair a lot of people have done what they think they need to do in order to be good people good citizens to the world according to the rules of society and they've invested a lot of time, energy, and effort into, into advancing through the various ranks of the social stratification system, only to have me come along and be like, oh no, you're you're sort of working for corruption. It's not it's not fair. So I try to do this work without a chip on my shoulder because I understand none of us chose this shit. We were dropped into the middle of a race, given a baton, told to catch up to and surpass those in front of us and stay ahead of and smoke those behind us. And it's just a shit show. It's not fair. That being said, even though it's not fair, we still had to get out, we still had to get off the path of corruption because what well, reality is like, hey, I don't give a shit what you think is fair. I have to destroy corruption. If you're part of it, then you gotta go too. So I'm gonna do everything in my power to try and help y'all as long as I can. And We'll see how it uh we'll see how it plays out. Um guys, if you get any sort of benefit out of what I do and you appreciate the work that I put into this and and you just wanna bless your boy with a little bit of love, you can always hit me up on Cash App at Donna King. It's D-O-N-N-I-E-K-A-N-G. Also, um you've always feel free to join the Patreon family. You know, um again, i I feel weird about saying this, but so far as I can tell doing whatever you can to try and help clear the path for this thing I'm hosting to be heard. It sort of works to offset whatever negative impacts you've, you, you've made on reality. And again, that's according to how I see it. I'm going to qualify it as such. I'm not trying to speak on behalf of reality in that way. That's just how I understand it. All right. So, um, you know, all proceeds, they go to building this up to a larger platform. Again, I want to reach as many people as I can before I'm out of this body. And I don't know how much time I've got in it, but, um, I mean, shit. I really hope y'all are brave enough to just step forward and start having the conversations. You know what it takes to have difficult conversations? Someone brave enough to start them. And you know what it takes, what it takes to, 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 to sort of continue through difficult conversations? People brave enough to stay and listen and talk. All of this stuff, it begins with bravery. And bravery and honesty are mutually inclusive things. You gotta be brave, folks. You gotta be brave. Yo, it's your man, Donald King. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful night. And you take care of yourselves, you take care of each other. Stop being so scary. Don't, don't, don't be an ideologue. Ideologue is so scared of reality that only thing they want is someone to make all the unpleasantness go away, and as such, they forfeit their intellect, they forfeit their 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 integrity, they forfeit their honesty because the only thing they want is comfort. Don't be that scary. Investigate. Things aren't as scary as you think they are. It's your man. I'm out. <laughs>